Probably my biggest passion with photography is shooting portraits, and I love shooting what I call street portraits, approaching people um, on the streets and um, doing their portraits. And normally when I do that, I use my full frame Sony a7R 3 but as I recently got the a6400 um, with the uh, Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4 lens um, to do messages like this, um, I um, been tinkering around with it and thought I would take it out and shoot some street portraits with it. I've been real curious for some time um, about exploring the 24 millimeter focal length, which this is 24 millimeter um, f2.1 equivalent. And I ended up having some pretty amazing results. Wow, the eye autofocus on this is really significantly better than the a7R3. Um, I actually used to own the a7R2 and um, eye autofocus was something that uh, was useful and that I really wanted to work <laughs> well, but it was pretty mediocre at best and I pretty much exclusively upgraded to the a7R3 for the purpose of getting better eye autofocus. And it, and it does work better, no doubt. But I'll tell you what, sometimes I'm in the middle of a shoot and sometimes it seems like um, certain lenses will be the culprit, but I'll be in the middle of a shoot and it just does not pick up on the pupil at all. Sometimes in the studio, sometimes out on the streets. I don't know the rhyme or reason to it. I've read every help article, every thread, and every forum I know of, and I think I've got all my settings just right. But... Um, I am really, really looking forward to the firmware update for the uh, A7 III and A7R III um, that hopefully puts the eye autofocus functionality on par with what I have here. I have my little friend here um, that I'm going to use as a guinea pig. And uh, right here I have my, um, <laughs> call this a poor man's HDMI recorder. Uh, I'm going to record the back of the screen with this and just just see if I can uh, see if I can illustrate what I'm talking about. So I've got my mannequin here and um, boom, I'm locked in on her. And as I would approach, I'm getting ready to show you some photos in Lightroom that I took out on the streets. And one thing that I kind of like doing artistically is if I have somebody who's willing to play the game and let me photograph them, I really like this idea of shooting and getting a bunch of angles and um, around, really working around them to get some interesting shots and some different angles. So um, I used to be a Leica Cube shooter and um, recently traded that in to upgrade some equipment and that the little spot autofocus tap set the focus point and a shutter release and that works cool and all but doing something like this anything like that or any camera that's not well frankly sony technology um, can't possibly do what i'm illustrating right now check this out All right, now let's go into Lightroom and check out what I'm talking about. Pretty amazing. Before we get to the street portraits, let's cycle through these mannequin shots. Um, by the way, I, um, I guess I had this my aperture set at f1.6. Close enough. And I have my, um, I have my ISO set with a shutter speed floor of one two fiftieth of a second so if there are any of these that are slightly blurry it's probably not because of shutter speed as much as just the eye autofocus being slightly off so here we go boom 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 okay so that one's that one's slightly out all right Nailing it, nailing it. I see that one. 
Yeah, that's oh no, it's it. now some of these it it may take a quick second for my computer the processor to catch up. But this is an interesting example here where actually my the eyeball is nailed um, in focus, but the eyelashes are out. Just imagine what it would be like at f one point four. That one's slightly out. Oh, here's this is interesting. So this must have been when I was twisting it really fast and it was still locked into the right eyeball and and this capture was taken right before it flipped to the nearest eyeball. And then there's, uh, let's see, that one's out and then now. Okay, this one's out. I was probably swinging really fast on that. That's out. That's out. Here's a here's a sequence of them that are slightly out. That one we've got this one that's in focus. Couple out of focus there. Then bam, we're back in focus. Pretty cool. So real world application of this. Um, here's here's a good example. So this guy. He's let me take his photograph a few times down on 6th Street here in Austin. Um, here's an example of, all right, and by the way, I'm at f1.4. Once again, I'm at uh, uh, 2 50th of a second, 16 millimeter, which is 24 millimeter equivalent. Uh, f 1.4 which is f 2.1 equivalent in terms of the shallowness of the depth of field so here's this sequence uh, with him um, so what impresses me about this right here is we've got this lock of of hair coming down in front of his eye yet the eye is just nailed insane tack sharp and the next one in the sequence <laughs> the hair is even more in front of the eye and the eye is in sequence now of course i realize that the 24 millimeter equivalent lens is not what you use for portraits but i wasn't after a one-to-one -one realistic representation i wanted this funkiness i wanted this distortion um, and uh, so that's what I that's the look I was after and by the way I don't normally I don't normally put um, uh, profile corrections uh, enable those but uh, in this case this is on and this is off so it definitely flattens out the image so once again this was the first in that image enabled uh, profile uh, this is disabled so once again it flattens boy it, it also really uh, it, it affects exposure too so here's the second one and then I swung around and got him to the side and uh, and again it was still locked in on his eye you can see once again how insanely um, uh, tight this depth of field is how shallow it is this part of his nose is out of focus um, that's in focus even this right here is slightly soft so it really was locking in on the pupil this was one of my favorite captures of the day i think it had a really mysterious look this is what i originally had and this is my crop and uh, this is what it looks like in black and white so this scene unfolds and I always try to be ready with the camera as things unfold. So these guys started catching on. They started arguing back and forth, these characters over here. And as things unfolded, pop. Okay, we've got this going on. Some guy's raising a camera and blasting a camera in his face. And then another one, hey, hey, oh, yes. So here's the next series. Once again, just insanely shallow depth of field. Moving around and around. I took, oh, there are probably about 10 of these in this 
uh, sequence and um, I think just about all of them were keepers in terms of focus I just kept a couple and this that's what I'm showing here's one had her look up into the lens and um, and cropped that in left and right let's see what I originally what I started off with was this uh, this is an example of what you deal with with uh, at 24 millimeter equivalent is you end up catching a lot of garbage in the perimeter that you don't want so it's really a lot harder to find a clean background to isolate the subject with and hence cropping it like that that came into play in this next sequence too all of these i converted to black and white it was, I guess it was still maintaining focus on his eye um, as I was moving around, even though he had glasses on. I'm not sure about the science behind that, but they were sharp enough for me. I was encouraging him. He, he had a lot of crazy hand gestures, so I was encouraging him to let it rip, man. I just said, you be you, and I was moving around, gyrating, went up high, went to the side, and then the last in this sequence, no eyeball at all, <laughs> ended up being focused on the hand. And wow, what a powerful shot that was. Just the character in that hand. Now this is what I started off with there. And after my edit, I changed from the three by two aspect ratio to a, uh, a four thirds aspect ratio. Once again, that's after my um, after my crop. This guy is kind of heartbreaking. He's only twenty years old. What a sense of style he had. And I just saw him, and I approached him and asked him if I well actually he approached me first but then I did my normal pitch and offered to pay him for his little his time um, and to let me practice my photography on him and he was willing to do that getting a little closer really cool intense look I was really working with leading lines here with this bench. I like that pose. I like that whole composition there. So backing out away this far, if I had been shooting at 24, so this is 16 millimeter on a APS-C sensor, and this is uh, at 1.4. So this is as shallow a depth of field as I was able to achieve. If I were using um, 24 millimeter on a full frame, at uh, f1.4 you know as in the new sony g master uh, 2414 then this would have been really abstract back here would have been kind of cool and that changed into black and white and then on to my next and last subject this guy this alleyway um, it's it's just so great to find spots when you're on your usual route the spots that work so many times this alleyway has a big truck in the middle of it whatever but it was it was empty in this case and i was able to to um capture these shots with him dead center in the alleyway um, here's black and white version of that and once again, I do have uh, profile corrections on there, and this is the difference there. That's with it off. This is with it's with it on. Don't think it makes a whole lot of difference. This photograph here is a great example of what not to do with uh, a 24 millimeter, you know, wide angle lens. In this case, 24 millimeter equivalent, because um, it did really add some weird distortion like not in a good way so i'm not thrilled with this shot now if i enable lens correction profile correction here um in fact it flattens it out in a way that i don't even like 
So that gives you, those are all the images that really give you an idea of what iAutofocus does. And I'll end it. My favorite image of the day is this right here. Just, wow, what a, I mean, I, I did a great job with this one. I nailed it and I'm so happy with this shot, but it's, it's just a testimony to the, the power of focal length, man. Um, you know, if I had shot this even at 28 millimeters, much less 35 or 50, there wouldn't be anywhere near the drama of all of these converging lines here, just converging right, right onto his face. Um, so I am having so much fun with this focal length. Very, very happy with the A6400. I didn't think that this thing would be anything more for me than just something to shoot video, but gosh, with this Sigma lens, I could see myself doing a lot more street out there and having a setup like this that's, um, that's lighter. The Sigma lens is pretty big, but it is it is lighter than full frame and and uh, just really enjoying uh, trying something different, getting out of my comfort zone. I sure do appreciate you walking, uh, watching this video. And uh, yeah, walking. Come to Austin and walk with me. Let's uh, do some street shooting together and just remember that your story matters. Mm -hmm.